good Wednesday morning. And it is November 30th, the last day of uh, uh, November, which happens to be St. Andrew's Day for all my friends in Scotland. Uh, I want you to know I miss Scotland. I had a wonderful time when I was uh, uh, there and thank uh, everyone for taking me around, taking me to Roslyn Chapel and Bolskine House and and uh, all the, the fun things that uh, uh, magicians and masons just, just love. St. Andrew's, of course. St. Andrew is uh, uh, patron saint of Scotland and who was a, actually a uh, as far as the uh, uh, you know first generation apostles go, it, a pretty cool guy, got himself crucified of of course as uh, it was in the cards for everybody, but uh, on an X kind of uh, cross, so that's the Saint Andrew's cross, and uh, as a matter of fact, I've got a tattoo. I have a simple St. Andrew cross on my, on my arm. Uh, for a reason. Anyway, I'm going to share something kind of uh, uh, special uh, this morning. In 1975, in November, uh, I've already talked about this a couple weeks ago, on the 15th of November, I was uh, uh, initiate, or initiated. I took my uh, zero degree initiation in the OTO, or uh, an OTO zero degree initiation because there was uh, uh, not too much of an OTO organization uh, going at the time, but uh, just two old ninth degree uh, OTO members were getting the OTO started uh, started up again after Crowley's death. So, but anyway, uh, uh, in August I took uh, my uh, uh, first degree initiation. So there's zero degree Minerva and first degree. And uh, shortly after that, I, uh, oh, at that initiation was Helen Parson Smith. She was one of the officers in my uh, uh, first degree initiation. So there was Phyllis uh, Seckler, Grady McMurtry, and Helen Parson Smith at my first degree. And Helen was doing some publishing. As a matter of fact, the first book of the law that, uh, uh, I read and burned <laughs> was uh, uh, Helen Parson Smith ed edition of uh, of the book of the law. Somehow I got another one, but uh, anyway, Helen was uh, uh, doing a had a very small uh, publishing house that published very, very limited uh, editions of, of rare Crowley books uh, in small numbered uh, editions and usually uh, made with handmade paper with sailcloth or, le or leather, Moroccan leather and things like that. This collector's kind of uh, editions. But anyway, I received a package in the in the mail shortly after my first degree initiation and uh, uh, containing uh, books that she th thought that I should read and one was the Jimmy Page facsimile edition of the Goetia uh, some uh, books of the books of the law uh, a beautiful uh, edition of Crowley's translation of the uh, Tao Te Ching uh, with uh, a raw silk 
cover with a strip of le oh it's just it's gorgeous i still have it somewhere but also she included this little book here and it's truly a tiny book Libra 21 okay and it is well just want to sh show you the how pretty it is and I, I don't know if you can see the texture of the paper but it's very uh, you can see by the edges that it's a uh, rough cut Libra 21 it's an AA publication in class B and it's sort of under the seal of both the AA and the uh, OTO and this little edition is number 67 and here's the book Libra 21 the King Cow King King Kang King the classic of purity being by Ko Yoon being an episode in the dynasty of Wu and now made into rhyme by me Alistair Crowley and in this particular edition it's got its ISBN number and everything else in it this is Thelema Publications, 1974. So there's now. Just says right down there, published by the OTO, Post Office Box 2043, Dublin, California. And that's the same uh, address that was on the the caliph card of the, the edition of the Thoth Tarot that uh, I had. And I wrote that address, and that's how I got into the OTO back in those days. But anyway, it's so short, and it's beautiful. And it, it's, it's like a distillation of the, of the Tao Te Ching. Uh, uh, it, it makes no... Uh, uh, Crowley did a, a full Tao Te Ching uh, uh, interpretation or, or classification in a larger book. But this is, is a distillation of Taoist thought uh, in only just 21 little verses. And so I'm going to read it to you today. Libra 21, The King, Kang, King, a classic of purity, first written down by me, Ko Yun, in the episode of the Dynasty of Wu, and now made into rhyme by me, Alistair Crowley. And like the Tao Te Ching, which is uh, broken up into uh, two major sections, Tao, T-A-O, and Te, the second one is Te, T-E. This has two sections, and the first section is Lao Kun, the master, said, Tao is devoid of form. Yet heaven and earth are brought to birth and nurtured by its norm. Tao hath no will to work, yet by its way of heaven the moon and sun rejoice to run among the starry seven. Tao hath no name. Its word is growth and sustenance to all. I am to give it a name, Tao. T-A-O. Heaven prosper the chance. Tao hath 
twin phase with te. The silent and the stressed. Of motion, those. Of these, repose, sublimely manifest. Heaven moves, pure silence he. Earth rests beneath the strain. Shuttle and loom, as word and womb, their mystery sustain. Pure motion maketh rest, as silence maketh stress. If man were still, then heaven should thrill with earth to nothingness. Self loveth silence, yea, but mind distracteth it. Mind loveth rest, but passion's pest allures the trembling wit. If man restrain desire, his mind will cease to roll, and mind's release allow pure peace of silence to the soul. The senses will not soil, the thought will not upstress, nor poisons, greed, wrath, dullness, breathe their triform deadliness. Men earn not ease of Tao, for their desires disease, because their mind is not refined of thought by killing these. If one should slay desires, his mind and body seem no longer his but fantasies, dance in a wanton's dream. Slay mind. Slay body, slay the external, matter goes, then space remains. Renew thy pains, up, front the final foes. Part 2 Lao Kun the Master said, the adept in skill of soil hath n excuse me the adept in skill of soul hath never an aim the bungler's shame is that he gropes a goal who most possesses the te concealeth their magic power who least possesses exert exert their stress seven times in every hour. These who cling fast to powers, who guard them and display their magic art, they are not part of Tao, nor yet of Te. Men win not truth of Tao because their minds are wired. Excuse Excuse me. I'm sure <laughs> Crowley might have been wired when he did this. Okay. Ride is the word. <laughs> Men win not truth of Tao because their minds are right. The mind uncurbed, the self perturbed, and loses tune of tide. Lost. The external lures, they turn to seek it. Then all things perplex, confuse, and vex those miserable men. Disordered thoughts arise. Body and mind grow sick. Disgrace and fear grow year by year to their climacteric. Wild, they are tossed about. Through life and death they quiver, sunk in sea stress of bitterness, and lose the Tao forever. The true abiding Tao, who understandeth, 
who understandeth hath, who hath the Tao is here and now in silence of the path. Slay space, then not abides. Hold not thy hand. When not gives back before the attack, serene thy silence stand. All's rest, devoid of mark. How should desires fix tooth? When they are past, thou surely hast the silence of the truth. Flawless, that truth and fixed, yet apt to each appeal nature, and sense to influence, the magnet to the steel. Oh, this true touch with all elastic and, and exact, that yet abides above their tides, the silence, free from act. He that hath this skill come little by little, a breath so floweth he now, to truth of Tao, wherein he vanishes. Men style him Lord of Tao, yet he hath none to lord, hid motive he of all that be, enough for his reward. He that can com comprehend this doctrine may transmit it Excuse me. He that can comprehend this doctrine may transmit this sacred Tao to men that vow themselves to fathom it. Each one of these lines is worthy of years of contemplation. Uh, if you're familiar with the Tao Te Ching, uh, Many of these little verses literally tickle you. And, uh, and if you're not, at least at first reading, this may seem like uh, uh, Zen Cohen-like riddle, like uh, fortune cookie memes. As a matter of fact, that they, they all would make a good uh, a fortune cookie uh, a uh, message or uh, a meme. But anyway, I thought I'd just uh, share that with you uh, today and share the little story of Helen Parsons Smith and her historic small publishing uh, uh, publishing firm. Now, where can you find your Libra 21? You know, pretty much just uh, at the moment, uh, I'm sure you can get this at an antiquarian bookstore or, or other uh, uh, people over the years have uh, pirated an edition. It's just so short that, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, did I do it? Here it is. I just uh, printed out, uh, you know, a single sheet of it myself. Uh, for a Monday night class a long, a long time ago. And you can just Google it and, and find it. Uh, chances are it's accurate enough to, for you to get an idea what it, uh, uh, what it's like. Anyway, it's got a beautiful little cover. I, uh, let's see if, if, uh, if it's, if it's in this edition, I believe it is. Yes. That's a Crowley pen drawing. And there's little Crowley, Ko Yoon, with his little signature there. So I'll hold that up for a second if you want to grab a screen snap of that. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I've got chores to do in the outer world today. 
and I don't know if the outer world is ready for me. If I survive, I'll be back tomorrow, same time. So until then, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.